today we are taking some of those less than spectacular thrift store finds giving them a little diy makeover and turning them into beautiful high-end looking home decor so let's go ahead and get creative and flip that trash to treasures Welcome back to my channel, or if you are new, welcome. I love to go thrifting, and I see potential in some of the scrappiest looking thrift finds. This particular flip is going to be from the Goodwill bins, where I found this very large mirror for only $10. You can see it was falling apart, and the stain on it had kind of a orange tint to it, which I was not fond of. For $10, I was willing to take a chance on it. My husband hammered the backing back onto the frame and luckily that was all it needed to put it back together. With the mirror back together, we are going to use this medium grit sandpaper block. It has this beveled edge, which will make it easy to get into the cracks and grooves around the frame. I just want to lightly sand and scuff up the finish on this. We're going to come back in with some paint and a really pretty sage green color. I am working on a couple of big projects around my house. My son recently got married and moved out, so his old bedroom is completely completely empty and I'm transforming it into my own personal office, something I have not had in almost 20 years. So I'm excited about that. I share a space in my guest bedroom. So by moving my office out of the guest bedroom, I also am going to be refreshing that space. So this mirror will be perfect for either one of those rooms. I haven't decided yet because I'm still getting furniture and accessories for both places, but you can't go wrong with a $10 mirror to freshen up either one of those rooms. After you've knocked back the finish on your frame, then you want to vacuum it and wipe it down, clean it up really good so that there is no dust or debris left behind. I picked up this soft sage American decor all in one enamel paint at Joann's. This color will go throughout my home anywhere I choose to place this mirror in the future. This paint was very easy to work with. You can tape off your mirror or you can just be brave and freehand it, cutting in very carefully around your mirror like I did. And now we just paint the frame going with the grain of the wood all the way around to the mirror. You can see after the first coat, there is still some of the original color coming through, so it will require a second coat of paint once this fully dries. I have not painted with this particular brand of enamel paint before, but I loved the coverage. It was smooth and it did not leave a lot of streaks. I just made sure to go with the direction and grain of the wood frame. Again, just carefully cutting in, making sure it's all double coated. The second coat covered up all of that original stain. Nothing was coming through. So we're just going to make sure that it has 24 hours to dry and cure. And then we're going to go back in with this Waverly Clear Wax to coat and seal our paint. This time I am using a sponge applicating brush to apply that clear wax, working in small sections. Once I put it on, I used a paper towel to wipe off any excess. Once you have coated the entire frame with this clear wax and wiped off any excess, let it dry a good 24 hours. And then come back in with a soft lint-free rag and buff the wax. You can buff it to any sheen you desire. You can go heavy handed all the way up to a high gloss shiny finish or just give it a light buff like I did here. And as easy as that, with just a little bit of paint, I have turned this $10 Goodwill Benz mirror into a high-end looking home decor piece. Mm -hmm. 
I found this set of wooden bowls for $1.99 at Goodwill back at the end of January. They have been in my crafting closet waiting for me to get inspired. So I was inspired, but full disclaimer here, these sounded like wood bowls. They felt like wood bowls. I was going to strip off this burgundy paint with this citrus strip. So I went through the entire process of that. It was when I was scraping and washing the citrus strip off that I discovered these are pressed wood bowls. So my intent to strip that paint and give a natural wood look to these bowls went out the window. So plan B, here we come. I am now going to use this pre-mixed joint compound to coat the bowls, give them a rough kind of pottery look to them. Then we're going to paint them and antique them. Had I known these were not wood to begin with, I would not have had to strip all of that paint off. I could have saved myself a lot of time and effort, but the way it goes sometimes with DIY projects, you have to shift gears and you never know until you start something. I started out using my putty knife to apply the joint compound and that was not working. So I then resort to just using my finger, smearing the joint compound on the inside and outside of the bowl. It does not have to be smooth or perfect. I want that rough look to it uh, like a hand pottery piece when I'm done. I made sure that it was just a light coat, especially on the bottom where it would still sit flat. This particular joint compound is a favorite of mine because it goes on pink and when it is completely dry, it is white. Make sure that you allow your piece to dry completely before you start your painting process. And here is what it looks like after I let it dry for 24 hours. If it is too rough to, for your liking, you can use a little bit of sandpaper and knock that texture back. I particularly loved the way this turned out as far as the texture. I am using that American Decor eggshell finish all-in-one enamel again. This time in the color Cream Puff. I also got this at Joann's. As simple as coating my bowls with a single thin layer of this paint. One coat did the job. I did not need to double coat this project. And since I will be antiquing it with some Waverly Antique Wax, it will cover up any spots that I happen to miss. Make sure your paint is completely dry before antiquing. I again waited 24 hours before I used my wax brush to come in with this Waverly antiquing wax. A very light coat will do the job and then using a paper towel before it dries, wipe any excess off. After I antique it and let the antiquing wax set up, I'm going to come back in with that original enamel paint color, thin it down with a little bit of water, creating a whitewash. I will brush that on and then immediately wipe it off. This will just knock back some of that antiquing that is on the surface, leaving it down in the cracks and crevices that your joint compound created. You can do this process on anything that you can dream up, vases, pottery, picture frames. The possibilities are endless and you can use any color palette that works and coordinates with your home decor. This next DIY high-end home decor flip is so simple but has such an impact in your home with your home decor. I gave you a glimpse of this $1 estate sale find in one of my thrift haul videos recently. It was a train wreck, right? The glass is broken, the picture is faded, but the frame is absolutely fabulous. And $1, you cannot beat that. 
So since the frame was in such good shape, there was not much to do for that except pull it everything apart and give it a good cleaning. I like to blow these cracks and crevices in these ornate frames out with a can of compressed air. You can also do this when you are dusting around your home. Once I get all of the cracks blown out, then I am using this antibacterial spray way and I'm just dousing the frame and using some paper towels to wipe everything down. I bought the canvas print that I am placing in this frame from Timu. I will have the canvas linked down in the description box below. Using the mat that came with the frame, I am positioning out where I want to cut the canvas. Once I get that placement, I just mark it with a pencil and then cut it out. Because this frame is a little bit older, I want to secure my canvas to just a piece of poster board just so that it lays nice and flat. I don't have glass that I'm using, so this will just help to stabilize the canvas and keep it from buckling and wrinkling up. I'm using some double-sided scotch stick tape to adhere the canvas to that poster board. This way it doesn't ruin the canvas. Assemble your picture frame back together, making sure that everything is secure and lays nicely from the front. And as simple as that, I have brand new artwork that looks expensive on this pre-printed canvas. A very upgraded high-end look for a $1 estate sale thrift. This 1990s style vase does not shout out high-end home decor for 2024, but I loved the shape, I loved the size, and I saw so much potential to make it into this inspiration piece from Pottery Barn. I cleaned it up really well, washed it and wiped it down, made sure it was clean and dry. Took it outside to give it a very light, rough coat of this white spray paint. This is more for like a primer coat so that the texture and treatment we're going to do on the vase will adhere. Once that primer coat of spray paint has had time to completely dry, we're bringing it inside where we are going to use this jute rope, some joint compound, and a fork to create our texture on the vase. I'm going to roughly measure out three grid lines. This is going to be where I attach that roping that I picked up from Dollar Tree. This is going to give that raised impression that the inspiration vase had. I'm using some E6000 to attach this and then holding it in place with some painter's tape until it dries. This roping has a wire in the middle of it, so that is good in regards to it bending and forming around my vase, but it also makes it a little stiff and curly to work with. So the painter's tape just helps to secure it and hold it in place. Once I have placed all of the roping around my vase, following those grid lines that I marked, I'm going to let it sit here on my counter and dry overnight just to make sure that E6000 is nice and adhered and the rope is in place. Once I was confident that the rope was not going to fall off, I removed the painter's tape and started working on my texture. I am using this Drydex joint compound again to create the texture on my face. This goes on pink and dries white, so you are sure to know when your project piece is ready for the next step. Using a small putty knife, I am just going to spread and smear this joint compound onto my vase. I want it to have some texture to it. 
I want it to look like homemade pottery. I want to make sure that I cover that rope that I attached to the vase. It can have thick and thin areas on the vase. That is what is going to give it that high-end homemade pottery look. I just continue working around the entire vase, spreading on that joint compound, making sure that I am getting the texture and the look that I was going for along the lines of that inspiration piece. Once I'm satisfied with the texture on this vase, I set it aside. I let it dry for a good 24 hours, came back the following day so that we could start with the next step, which is taking the piece outside using some sandpaper. I'm knocking down the rough edges of that texture. Not completely. I don't want it smooth, but I do want it to have a more finished look than it did just the straight up putty. There were some deep grooves and some peaks on the joint compound that I did not like. So you can definitely control how much or how little texture you have. This is absolutely forgiving and you can get the look that you're going for. Be sure you wipe down your piece with a damp rag, making sure that it is free of any of that dust and debris from where we sanded. That inspiration piece had some ridging in it, so I am going back in and putting another very thin layer of joint compound. I am putting mine on that largest middle band. Not very heavy or very thick, just enough so that I can take my plastic fork and run it through that joint compound. I am using my cake decorating Lazy Susan stand so that I can spin my face around and get a more uniform and consistent look when doing this. You can see here how I created the ridges in my pottery piece. Again, keeping it a little rough. As I show you the paints here that I chose to use on this vase, I didn't like it. The terracotta was perfect. It matched the look of the inspiration piece, but when it came down to the blue, I did not like it. I knew immediately I did not like it. Ask me why I continued to keep painting. I thought it would be better, maybe fully coated and dried. It was not. So again, we're going to pivot to plan B. Don't do this step of the DIY. I left it in here because I wanted to show you that uh, what you see here on YouTube is not always perfect. And you just got to be brave and try something. You can recover from almost any DIY. And that's what we're going to do next. First, I've got to take it back outside. I've got to sand off those very deep ridges from the fork. I liked the ridges, but they were just a little too pronounced. So I'm gonna use some rough sandpaper and knock those back. Once I've knocked back the ridges and kind of roughed up that paint, I'm gonna use this Rust-Oleum spray paint. It is a satin finish. It was way too shiny, but that is okay. We're going to do a painting technique on top of it so you will not notice that it is shiny. I'm using these colors here. I have gray, light cream, bleached sand, and fawn. I have a wet sea sponge that I've squeezed all of the water out of, so it's just barely damp, and I'm going to pounce it in all of the colors together. I have shared this technique before on different projects. It is foolproof for me. If I can do it, you can do it. You can't mess it up. You can add more paint, take paint away. This is a very forgiving and easy painting technique. So just keep pouncing. I am using a brush stroke around following the curves of the vase and that joint compound that I spread on. 
just trying to mimic what would be a handmade pottery piece. Once I have the entire vase covered with those four colors blended together, before it dries, I'm going to mix a little bit of black acrylic paint in with those same colors, and I'm going to randomly pounce that on top of the vase. And because I want it to have a softer look and a more natural age look to it, I'm taking a damp paper towel that I've squeezed all the moisture out and I'm going back over top of the paint and just softening it by pouncing it on top of that black paint mixture. This is just going to blend it out. It looks very spotty right now, but the more you blend it, the more you pounce, go straight down and straight up. You don't want to smear it. You want to literally just pounce on your paint. It is going to blend out and look more aged and authentic. These colors together are also blending in, giving it that subtle grayish blue color that was more uniform but representative in that Pottery Barn inspiration piece. This is not a piece that is going to be handled often, so I did not seal mine. You could absolutely use a spray sealer to lock in all your colors and to protect your vase. I am very happy with how this eventually turned out. It looks stunning and it is a one of a kind, high-end home decor thrifted DIY. Our time together today is drawing to an end. I hope you enjoyed these DIY thrifted home decor makeovers. If you did, I appreciate that thumbs up. I invite you to subscribe and I can't wait to see you in that next video. So until then, have a wonderful and blessed day.